Someone put silicone all over the head gasket, and guess what? It still leaks oil! Hey guys, this is Josh with Depth Tape Channel, and in this video, we're going to be discussing do hack mechanics use silicone? And to further that, when should you use silicone in an engine? I would have to say that yes. Not to go 10 minutes into the video before I answer the question, hack mechanics do seem to use silicone in probably not the best locations, and they tend to use more than they probably should. However, that is situational, of course. However, saying that, almost every mechanic, well, every mechanic I've ever known, including myself, uses silicone. Not only that, a lot of factory parts do come with silicone to seal them or help seal them with or without a gasket. Part of this video is going to be me discussing where I think you should use silicone. And there's basically three categories for silicone use. Where you should use it, where you definitely should not use it, and then there's some gray area in between that is subjective and up to your experience, what your history is, the parts being used, that type of thing. Not everything in here is black or white. So the first thing we need to discuss before discussing the subject, of course, what is silicone? Now, there is a element called silicon or silicon, depending on how you pronounce it. It doesn't have the E at the end. Silicone, which we're discussing here, is not silicon. Silicon is in silicone, but it is they're not the same. Silicone is a synthetic polymer that is used in hundreds, thousands of different applications. For instance, brake fluid has silicone in it. Not only that, there are almost every industry uses silicone to some differing extent. You can find it in your kitchen. These gloves are made of silicone. Of course, you can find it in certain medical procedures. Can't think of anything. Um, also, you can find it in automotive or diesel applications, which we're discussing here. Now, it's not only used as a sealant. Like I said, it can be found in brake fluid. It can also be found in silicon lubricant, which is more of like a gel oil for lubricating connectors, keeping out moisture. But what we're specifically talking about is RTV silicone. Now, you've probably said RTV or you've seen it. Did you ever think, what does RTV stand for? Well, I had to look it up because I didn't know. It is room temperature vulcanizing. Bet you wouldn't have guessed that one. So what does room temperature vulcanizing mean? Well, vulcanizing, of course, means to live long and prosper. Okay, that's not what it means. It means to harden, similar to a rubber. So, of course, silicone, when it comes out of whatever tube you're using, it is more like a gel. And room temperature vulcanizing, of course, means at room temperature, meaning, you know, anything from 60 to 100 degrees, it's going to harden, and that gives it good sealing properties. So why does it have good sealing properties? Well, for one, it's very chemical resistant, depending on what version you're using. It's going to allow heat expansion and contraction, since it's gonna remain somewhat pliable, and it's a very good sealant. So why not just use it on everything? Well, it has, some bad sides. If you ever use it, let's say you use it where there is a seal in place. We'll say a gasket. So you have two flat flanges with a gasket in between them. Well, when the silicone is being applied, it is a gel. It's more of a lubricant than a sealant. So between where the bolt holes would be on these two flanges, if you apply silicone, it can actually act as a lubricant and the gasket can actually slide out of place. So that's one good reason not always to use it. Now, sometimes, depending on the style of gasket you're using, that's not possible. Let's say a head gasket. There's so many bolt holes holding the gasket in place that that would be physically impossible. But just because it's not physically possible for the gasket to move out of place doesn't mean the silicone needs to be in with the gasket. The gasket is usually cut to a certain size, and it's there for a specific reason. If you're adding an extra lubricant, or an extra sealant, I should say, it's going to squish and then harden. Now, this can be really bad because under, let's say, a head gasket, you have coolant passages and oil passages, and if you use silicone, it can actually block those off. Or, 
over time it can break off if you've used too much and then you have a basically indestructible rubber element that's floating around in your oil pan possibly it can plug up your oil filter can plug up your oil pump pickup screen that's the most common the only thing that should be in your oil pan should be oil you shouldn't have zip ties you shouldn't have old broken parts that you haven't removed you shouldn't have pieces of silicone floating around in your oil pan most items when they come from a manufacturer are going to have a gasket or an o-ring some sort of seal between two components that could leak obviously an alternator bolt into an engine doesn't have any fluid exchanging happen so it doesn't need a gasket but typically let's say a water pump or a valve cover it's going to have a seal of some sort now if it has a seal and it's a one-piece seal or some style of o-ring I recommend you do not need any additional sealants added to it you don't need silicone you don't need any gray weird stuff you don't need blue anaerobic sealant the seal is there and it'll do its job assuming the parts are clean properly tightened and the surfaces are flat and straight that is how you should be assembling components now when I say why do hacks use silicone that's because people tend to over rely on it because they either don't trust the parts they don't trust the assembly process or they think that adding silicone will prevent it from leaking it's not gonna happen silicone is not magic now we're gonna discuss when it's appropriate to use silicone even by manufacturer standards it's only good in certain instances and those instances in my opinion and typically from the factory are if the components do not have a seal and they rely on silicone the silicone is then that seal that's number one number two where there are more than two flanges meaning now what do I mean by this let's say on a diesel engine you have a front structure and a cylinder block you have a gasket typically between these two surfaces well also you have an oil pan that bolts to the bottom of that so you have three flanges meeting at one point both flanges have their own seals however there's always a gap between those seals so typically even at the factory they'll put silicone as a substitute for that small gap that's going to be there it works really well there obviously you don't want to use too much you just need enough to seal the area the other place they would be would be any sort of cut to length seal or any sort of gasket where you have multiple pieces going together they're similar to an oil pan that has what they call a puzzle gasket that's multiple pieces you would want to put, put some sort of sealant between them not only that cut the length seals like on a valve cover base where you cut and then splice where you have two overlaying seals you would want to put some sort of rubberizing sealant silicone there that's a good place to use silicone okay so time for what I consider to be hack uses of silicone we had a truck come in that someone had silicone the entire c15 head gasket now if you know what a c15 head gasket looks like it's enormous it's about four feet long by about foot wide and this whole thing was full of silicone it was squirting out the sides now I'm assuming the person that did that because the c15 head gasket areas are renowned for leaking oil not pouring out but typically seeping out well guess what they used all this silicone it still leaked silicone is not magic now I know as I'm saying this someone's writing the comment well Josh uh Caterpillar said to put silicone on the head gasket to fix the leak no Caterpillar never said to apply silicone to the head gasket they did have an interim fix where you applied silicone to the outside of the cylinder head but they do not recommend that even anymore another place uh, there was a topic that came up in a comment section on one of my previous videos the use of silicone in wiring harnesses especially the undercover valve cover harnesses on the cats over time they tend to push oil out through the wiring insulation through the plug and it can may actually make it all the way into the engine ECM someone was saying you should use silicone there both parts have seals the silicone does not add any additional sealing to the component the oil is slightly under pressure due to the blow-by fumes in the engine and it's pushing its way through the insulation and the wires it's the insulation of the wires is almost like a hose and over time it's going to push through those connectors there's no amount of silicone or anything you can really do to keep it from doing that just adding silicone is not helping the situation it's going to make moving the connectors harder 
it's also going to prevent them from coming apart as easily. And then if you ever use silicone, of course, it can wind up in your oil pan, which we already discussed is a bad thing. Okay, so we've discussed where it should be used, where it should not be used. What about this big gray area, this no man's land in between? Well, here's where silicone can be used, and it's really up to your discretion. I There's not a right or a wrong opinion on this, is let's say you have a really old component, maybe on a 50-year-old engine, it's cast aluminum, you're trying to reseal it, and it's heavily corroded, or it's got a lot of cavitation, and the seals just, you don't trust the seal sealing it by itself. Would silicone be a good fix for that? It may work. It's, it's a good sealant used in conjunction with a, another seal, not always the best. I'd say if you do have, if it's a flange, like a flat surface, I would recommend some sort of hardening uh, epoxy, like a JB Weld or a Belzona. Uh, Loctite makes the superior metal product, which is basically like Belzona, where you mix it, it then hardens over time, and then your gasket would work there. Uh, that's what Cat recommended for their cavitation issues on in between the cylinder heads on their C15s for a long time, although they don't recommend that anymore. Will it work? It can work in situations like that. Or if you have a, a ceiling surface that's not quite flat, the gasket isn't going to quite take up the gap, you can try silicone. You just have to remember it's not as good as two flat, clean surfaces. If it's something you're just trying to cheap through it, you know, get it to last a few years, it's probably not going to be as good as a hardening epoxy, but it's a lot easier to apply. And with that, that draws our discussion of silicone to a close. However, time for a little destruction of the week. So I had a customer came in and they had a number six cylinder that was not powered, AKA dead. And this is actually the same engine that had all the silicone in it. And you can see they have some really good vertical crosshatch going on here. The piston did not escape the damage either. As you can see, piston and liner completely destroyed. Thanks for watching.